Hey guys, it's Mike with Become the Night. Welcome back to Song Suggestion Friday. I'm joined by Ben, a fantastic guitar player. Sup? Ryan is too busy sucking dick right now, so he will not be joining us today. <clears throat> I said Ryan is too busy sucking dick right now, so he won't be joining us today. You can say it again if you need it, Ryan. It's fine. <laughs> it's true. Yes. <laughs> As always, here are the rules. We grade these songs based upon however the hell we feel, whatever biases we have. If we just hate it because we hate it because we caught our... Caught our dog fucking shitting all over the bed while we were listening to it, you know? I don't even know why I said that, but it's okay. <laughs> Plus sign means we liked it, we would actively seek it out again. Equal sign means that we might have liked it, might have disliked it, but wouldn't turn it off or actively avoid it. Also wouldn't go actively seek it out. Minus sign means we will actively get the fuck away from that song. If you guys want to suggest songs to me, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you would like to be one of the power people who gets to choose which songs are picked for Song Suggestion Friday, run it over to my Patreon page for at least $5 pledge a month. You can partake in the Patreon poll to decide which songs go in the video. Fuck you, Ryan, let's begin. <laughs> Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by Cage the Elephant. I love this song. There's some really cool slide blues guitar in it. It kind of gives you that, that cool little jive going on. Uh, it sounds reminiscent to me of Everlast, if you guys are familiar with Everlast at all. That was kind of like a thing in the 90s that happened, and like Santana did a song It was, it was bizarre. Yeah, it's kind of like a rock semi-rap, kind of West Coast style fusion. It's, it's cool stuff. The only thing that disappointed me was that it was a pretty short song. <laughs> it's probably had... Oh, I mean, it's I just... I had minutes. I just, like the standard. It, it was less than three minutes. What? Yeah. No was, way. Yeah, and oh, I, wow. I just I just wanted more, that's all. I, that's really all it was. I just wanted yeah. more. That could have been... That's all. I feel you. Yeah, I mean, I've actually heard this song of, of, of once a million times. I've actually seen these guys live. Everything about Cage the Elephant is solid. And I actually, uh, before I even heard... Rest for the Wicked, which was the first Cage the Elephant song I heard, they, uh, I heard like a radio interview, and he actually didn't do drugs, he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't like, he's actually a pretty straight edge guy, and he was talking to like a construction worker friend, and someone, he was just, you know, talking to his friend like, hey, you need to like kind of chill out on the bad things you're doing in your life, and, and then the guy responded, ain't no Rest for the Wicked, ha, huh, there's a song idea, and that was like his first like major hit. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so lyrically, which there's not hardly any songs that I really love the lyrics, but the lyrics you saw in the song, the yeah. form of the song, how the bass like really drops in after what is already a great guitar riff that carries it, just like adds more beat to the song. Uh, yeah, solid band, solid song, solid everything. Total grade for this song, plus sign. Absolute plus sign, yeah. Pictures of You by The Cure. This is in contention for the most unoffensive song ever created. <laughs> the production is interesting given the time period. I mean, it was pretty spacey, which a lot of things in that time had a lot of reverb, but they're also extremely punchy. And they were, they were usually, especially the drums were super compressed, super squashed. So it was interesting to see a little bit of this backed off a little bit on this song in particular. Uh, the guitar work is kind of boring. It's not bad, just boring. I guess The Cure is a good band. I don't know that I'm the best judge for that. Uh, they've just never really appealed to me, but I know a lot of people like them. I actually have a number of friends who really love them. I don't know why they made this song seven minutes. You could have easily chopped off two minutes and it would have been just fine. The the guitar, when I first, it was actually listened to it this morning. I listened to every other song twice, but this song, it was, it was pretty, very boring actually. It, like the intro was way too long. It wasn't that great of a riff. It, yeah, they were real, as, as Ryan would say, fuck you, Ryan. As Ryan would say, they were very proud of that guitar work at the yeah. beginning. <laughs> and it was like, I mean, it was cool for two times. Like, should have like two times and then started singing, but it went way, way, way too long. Yeah. The, the whole song was really actually pretty boring. I've actually never heard of The Cure. Because this song kind of reminded me of a YouTube vibe, that like pop, simple guitar, which is hard to pull off. And they didn't pull it off with this one, in my opinion. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Likewise, just, it wasn't an offensively bad song, it just wasn't anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, equal sign. Who Are You by The Who. Oh, the intro really threw me off. Uh, the duck quack synth is actually kind of funny. Fuck you, Ryan. 
<laughs> this is one of the catchiest choruses there ever was. Uh, amazing vocal harmony in there as well. The subtle guitar thingies in the bridge were really cool. The little light, like, clean guitar runs just, like, going around that were, like, you could barely hear them, but they were just audible. It was really cool. In general, that bridge was just super cool. In that bridge, I hear a little bit of Steve Vai. Not that obviously Steve Vai didn't influence the Who. I'm talking about vice versa, you know? Just the overall vibe of the bridge, how it's kind of spacey, some of the melodic choices, some of yeah. the chord choices. It just it reminded me a little bit of Vi. I can see that. Maybe even like a little Zappa, maybe. Yeah, for sure. Except happier sounding. Yes, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it's one of those musical journey bridges. You know you're about to go on a trip, and it, it was a fun trip. I mean, there's just no argument. This is a classic song. This is what put the Who on the map. It's, you know, and everything about the song is epic. By far, my favorite part. I remember the first time I heard the song, I'd never really ventured into like outside of like radio music even though this was played on the radio. Having said that, but that was like the first radio song where like the actual, the bridge does take you on a journey. That's like the best way to describe it. Like, it's just really psychedelic sounding. You can almost like, you know, feel like you're at a music festival and like, you know, there's flowers and it's very just like- Drugs and boobs. Yeah, Fuck you, Ryan. It really, <laughs> it really is like, you know, it's just, it just feels like if Woodstock had like a sound, like that would be my idea of what Woodstock was. So it's, I mean, classic song, great band. And his vocal sounds, I actually saw them, I didn't see them live, I saw them on TV live. His voice is not as good as it was <coughs> in that track, which is really sad. Happens. They were still super tight band. I mean, really talented guys. Total grade for this song, plus sign. Yeah, plus sign. Backbone by Gojira. Uh, this song is just fucking brutal. Great main riff. Not too complicated of a riff, but just really straight ahead and cool. That dude's double kick chops and his blast beat chops are off the wall. Not much more for me to say on this. I, I know Gojira technically falls into prog metal, and this one doesn't display that so much, but I mean, it's still a really good metal song in general. Everybody needs songs like these in their lives. This one's that like super simple, like. What you think of when you hear like metal, just like that chugging, I, I assume they're in drop D, I didn't have time to like get my guitar and figure out what key they're in. They're in drop something, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. they're not in standard. It's a very satisfying riff. If you're a beginner guitarist and you're trying to find some like hard, not hard as in like technically, but heavy stuff to play, and, this would be... And if you want to really get your uh, your strumming hand chops down. Yeah, I guess there is that trip like... Dun, 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 dun. Like, yeah, it's yeah. got those grinding guitar. He's got way too much distortion, which is it's a very satisfying <laughs> song. There's just nothing wrong with the song. It keeps up the energy. There's been some songs that have been suggested where it starts out like these, and then it goes in like the long bridge. This one is like straight through, doesn't get repetitive. It's well done. And my first Gojira song. No, no kidding. Yeah. I actually uh, just picked up this album. Well, I shouldn't say picked up. But I started listening to this album, I think, either, I think two weeks ago. So this was my second time listening to this song. Total grade for this song, fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> Plus sign. <laughs> Plus sign. Also, fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, this is this is not going to get old. <laughs> this is what you get for chicken tenders, you prick. <laughs> we actually brought chicken tenders, but instead of eating them, we stepped on them. And burned them. Just so we could take a picture of it and send it to you. So you can wallow in misery. That's true. Aneurysm by Nirvana. I think the intro is pretty annoying. It was just a riff that was just kind of like, eh. It's, it's one of those standard annoying Nirvana riffs for me. The guitar wailing thing. I, I think I probably would have enjoyed that better if it was over a different riff. The chorus riff was cool though. That, that was actually pretty fun. And... Kurt Cobain does have a way of making his lyrics very musical in nature. They're not just words to be listened to and digested. They actually go along with the music, so uh, props to that. You getting the light Nirvana now? No. <laughs> not really my thing, but for Nirvana, it's not bad. It's pretty simple and relatively unremarkable to me, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, as far as n the Nirvana, I'm probably like what Mike hates about Nirvana. Like when I started listening to this song, I had just had to put a bunch of like songs on the queue, all the list, the list of songs on the queue, so they all all played back to back. I started hearing the songs like, oh, I must be past the queue. I don't really like this one. And I was like, 
Oh, it's Nirvana. Sick. I love this already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it was Nirvana. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll deal with it because you. And that, that has nothing to do with bias, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, once you know Nirvana, like, I guess, like, because if, uh, if any band just starts out that messy and dirty, you're like, all right, they don't know what they're doing. And then I knew it was Nirvana. Like, okay, okay, like, I have faith in this song that they're going to pull this back in together. And so, so. So you would agree that the intro was a little annoying? It was messy. But, like, the second time I liked it more because I knew what was coming okay. in that sense. <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, a legendary Mozart <coughs> piece or anything like that by any means. It was very messy, uh, very grungy, garage band, dirty rock. I can see why it wasn't, you know, on the radio much. It was actually on the B-sides. So, I think even Nirvana acknowledged it wasn't their greatest hit. Um, but it was, it was a cool, if I was just, you know... It's, it's one of those songs, I think I, it's my favorite way to describe songs. If I had a playlist of like grunge rock this, and this came on, I, you know, it just kind of would flow through and I wouldn't even notice it. Total grade for this song, equal sign, with a caveat. The caveat is that I would have to skip through the intro. Other than that, I would let it play and not be offended. I want to give it a plus sign. Because I like Nirvana. Of course. I don't listen to them nearly enough to like be giving a plus sign, but I'm giving you a plus sign to like make a mental effort. Like, all right, let's let's get some more Devon knowledge. Yeah, you'll you'll regret that. Fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> Big Dick by No Means No. The guy who suggested this and has been bugging my ass off to get this on Song Suggestion Friday described it as progressive punk and really wanted us to listen to it for some reason. I'm not sure if this was just a troll to try and get this on here so we can laugh some more about how terrible songs are. Is this progressive punk? No. <laughs> I would put this on the fringe of what might be influenced by punk music. It was very bizarre. Uh, some of the singing is slightly annoying, I would say. All in all, I did not hate this song. I mean, it's not something I'm going to be seeking out again. I'm just telling you that right now. It's literally just drums and vocals, which is an interesting approach to, for how to do this song. The drums are actually pretty cool and pretty tasty, I will say that. There, there are some really cool drum beats in there. All in all, I just don't get it, and I don't know what... Please, in the comments section, tell me what you were trying to convey to me here. <laughs> so whoever suggested this song, I feel like they wanted to get this song a bad review, because they knew it, so I will deliver. This song was god awful. I actually hated this more than the Swan song. Oh. Um, that, I th that that uh, the song Oxygen was fucking horrible. Yeah, it, it was terrible. <laughs> I still put I still put Oxygen lower than this song by far. <sighs> nope, nope. I hate like okay. So there's three parts to music outside of like recording, but like to actual just music, there's melody, harmony, and rhythm. This song. Barely had a melody, no harmonies, and a... oh, there was harmonies. They harmonized with each other in some parts. Well, they're not singing in a melody, so like they can't harm. It's a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. I think it's supposed to be a mess. And the and the vocals were taken way down. The drums were like recorded with a phone. <laughs> uh, it was terrible. The whole song was terrible. There was no structure. They intentionally made the guy's vocals terrible. There was no lyrical value. The I feel like I've given this song too much time already in this review. It was a terrible song, and I actually it, it made me mad that Spotify has an he, autoplay feature. He oh, <laughs> so after that song was over, that was the last one on my queue, and then it played a song related to that song, which was the same band, and I like literally threw my headphones off in anger. It was a bad song. That's amazing. He literally pinged me while we were at work and was like, my face, my brain is melting while I am typing this to I you. I literally couldn't focus. <laughs> I was about to like do work and my head hurt. Like I couldn't think, like every other song I was like, all right, this is a good song, vibing, like doing emails. Not this song. This song literally stopped my brain. Bad song. Bad song. <laughs> bad, bad song. Bad song. Bad song. Fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Total grade for this song, minus sign. It's not that I hated it. I just, there's, I, if this comes on, why would I keep this on, honestly? I have better things to do with my time. I'm going to give this the strongest negative as of to date. <laughs>
It actually made me this, angry this and burned is, the brain cells. This is a rock hard negative. That's gonna. It's gonna <laughs> pre, dude. Yeah, that, this I hate the song pre. more than Ryan right now. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for our suggestions. My suggestion this week is to go to my cover of Jimi Hendrix all along the Watchtower. I know it's originally a Bob Dylan song. Just fucking follow me. With the exception of Hendrix, I think it's one of the best damn covers ever done of the song. Personally, he's being realistic. It's actually really great. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not just blowing my own horn. Like I'm trying to be objective here. Toot toot. <laughs> toot toot. <laughs> Fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> I just got the internet. Best. What was it? Best played intentions by the art of the. Art of the deal. Art of the... <laughs> <laughs> you just put the real title. The real title's right here, but it's like yeah. the best laid intentions by Art of the Deal. <laughs> I I just heard the song. It's new to me. So, but it's a. It's so good. It's got like a, it's like got a whistling intro, which is really interesting. But as you listen to it, like at least, at least listen to it to like two minutes, two and a half minutes. That's when like this baller chorus comes in. It's got like really hard hitting lines, and then it like just goes to straight little like really tasty guitar licks. And I'm a guitarist in this song. If you're a guitarist, you'll love the song. I think anybody would love the song. It's kind of got like a Latin metal feel to it. It's really cool. It does have some cool uh, guitar parts in it for sure. It's kind of like swing and metal. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for Song Suggestion Friday. Fuck you, Ryan. If you want to make suggestions, put your comments in the comments below. Put your comments in the comments below. Good job, Mike. You're fucking amazing. Put your suggestions in the comments below. If you want to vote on which songs we review for Song Suggestion Friday, run over to my Patreon page, a pledge of $5 a month or more. We'll get you access to those weekly polls where you can decide what is in the video. And uh, fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on! Fuck you, Ryan.